Hi, Dean Winters here with Ed Margolis, co-director of Lucky Glider Rescue and Sanctuary. He's uh, here to answer a few common questions about living with sugar gliders. Ed, thanks, thanks for coming. So, first question, what kind and how often do sugar gliders need interaction? Good question. Uh, you know, there's two kinds of interactions that sugar gliders have. They have interactions with their own species, and they have interactions with, uh, with you, the, the pet owner. Uh, I would say that, you know, the interaction with their own species is the best interaction. That's why it's important that you have more than one sugar glider. Um, you don't want that sugar glider to be dependent on you for interaction. Uh, it, it, it needs to have same species interaction. Two or three other cage mates, very important, it lowers their stress, makes them more happy. That said, the amount of interaction you should have with them, regardless of number, is uh, at least daily. Um, at night when they come out and to eat, let them eat a little bit, take them out of the cage, let them jump on you, play with them, tease them with cat, you know, feather teasers, uh, you know, let them run around. Sometimes you can do that in a bathroom, uh, stick towels into the door so they don't sneak out into the next room, uh, plug up the drains, and so on. But uh, they, they love being with you. They become bonded to you as they start growing and you start feeding them and giving them treats and interacting with them. They become more dependent on you and look at you as being part of their colony. Uh, so it's, it's really important that you try to play with them every day for at least an hour. Okay, and what are some of the most important things to remember about playtime? Um, probably the most important thing to remember is the glider's curiosity and the glider's sense of playfulness define its play. So you don't need to do a whole lot to encourage them to play. You just need to sit there and let them come to you. Uh, a lot of times they'll come up to you and they'll jump on your shoulder and start grooming you. They'll kiss your ear, they'll lick your face, um, and they like to play jumping games. So if you can hold on to them, like put them up on a shelf or put them up on a shower rod, you know, and then step away uh, a foot or two, they'll, they'll jump over to you and you can progressively step further and further away. They'll get more and more confidence in their glide. Uh, but um, for the most part, all you need to do is sit there and let them come to you. Okay, and uh, an important question here, what are some of the most common household hazards posed to gliders? Yeah, I, I would say keep them out of the kitchen. Uh, clearly, they can get into the kitchen drain. Uh, <clears throat> you know, that's not good. Uh, you don't want them going underneath the refrigerator because there's you know, compressors and fans and stuff, uh, you know, pilot lights from ovens. So keep them out of the kitchen. Uh, it, keep them, uh, make sure that <coughs> if you are Pardon me. If you are in a bathroom with them, you want to make sure that uh, underneath the cabinets where the plumbing is, that there's no rough, gaping holes that they can get behind into the wall. Run your fingers underneath the cabinetry to make sure there aren't any holes in the woodwork, and if there are, you have to stuff them with a towel or you know cover them up somehow. Um, be careful of uh, house plants. Uh, some of them are poisonous. Generally speaking, you should not have uh, you know standard house plants in the same room. You have a glider running around. You should get childproof uh, electrical uh, plugs to put into uh, sockets that aren't being used. And you should also wrap electrical cords in the little tubular things that you can get at Home Depot to uh, you know to cover up uh, cords uh, for for children. Uh, fans, uh, if they can reach a fan, they can leap pretty far. You know, it's not a good idea to have a fan on if, if they can possibly climb up the door jam and jump over to the fan and get themselves hurt. You have to be careful when you close doors. You have to put something, a, a towel or some kind of draft dodger or something under the door so they don't crawl out under the door into another room. Things like that. And remember, if you're interested in any more safety information, you can visit our YouTube website. We have two videos up there on free range glider rules. Um, the next question is, some people take their sugar gliders outside to play. Is this recommended? I think it's okay to take them outside to play, but there are certain risks associated with doing that. Uh, the first risk associated with doing that is flight. Uh, if they feel like running away and you're near trees or buildings or something they can climb up onto, you may never see your glider again. Another risk is animals. Uh, you know, if some person's dog or cat is loose and they see the glider running on you, they're, they're going to want that glider they're, and they're going to either want to play with it or kill it. 
So if you go out to a park, you've got to watch out with other animals. If you go out to a place that has trees, you want to keep them away from the trees. Uh, the third thing um, is dehydration. Uh, they only weigh five ounces, and if you live in a, in a hot area, you know, they can dehydrate very quickly. So you want to take water with you. You want to take, you know, fruits uh, with you to uh, keep them hydrated. Um, and they don't like the sunlight, so you have to make sure that if you take them with you, that you have a pouch, a vented pouch that allows them to breathe. They can, they can uh, die of exposure, heat exhaustion, very easily. Uh, likewise, they're not meant to be in the cold. So you have to be real careful with them. I, I mean, if you're going to take them outside, I, I wouldn't leave them outside that long. And never, never leave them in a cage outside. They'll die of exposure pretty quickly. And of course, uh, being exposed to the elements in feral cats and other animals that could bust into a cage, you just don't want that. So what should you do if you're planning on going vacation, on vacation and uh, you don't know what to do with your gliders? Well, first of all, that's the kind of thing you should think of before you get gliders. Uh, but if you, you know, you want to make arrangements with people who understand gliders, who understand how to take care of gliders, it's a good idea to join a community group. Like for example, at Lucky Glider Rescue and Sanctuary, we have a meetup group. We meet once a month. It's open house. You know, people can come together who have sugar gliders and talk to one another. So if you hook up with other glider uh, owners, glider enthusiasts, then you can, you can kind of trade duties with one another when you go on your respective vacations and watch each other's gliders. I think that's really the best way of doing it because there's not enough people out there that understand how to take care of a glider that you would trust them. Uh, so that's, that's the way I would do it. Uh, or do a local vacation where you go out and goof around and then come back at night uh, type of situation. Okay. Um, lastly, and uh, most importantly, what do you do if your sugar glider unexpectedly escapes out of its cage, and what are some precautions you can practice to avoid this? Right. Well, the precautions, firstly, you can make sure that your cage um, has little dog clips, those little spring clips that you use for uh, clasps, that you use for dog collars sometimes, or some other device like that as an extra measure. You can clip that onto the doors because some cage doors are easy to fling open. Uh, so that's one precaution. Um, another one is to put them in a room, that is put the cage in a room where you can close the door so that they go do get out of the cage, they at least can't get out of that room. So those are precautions. If they do get out, um, if, if, if you can possibly contain them in one room, that would be great. Um, you can get food and water and put it at the at the last place you saw them on the floor or wherever you saw them, put food and water there. Put in one of their nesting boxes or pouches there that smells that has their nesting material in it. And when they get hungry and when they get thirsty, they're going to come back to that spot. They might eat, they might drink, and then they might run off and hide again. But you, you generally, you know, gliders, uh, you know, are uh, the way they behave is they'll eat and then they'll want to sleep a little bit. So if they go to eat and they smell their pouch next to where the food is and they've been running around a little bit, they'll probably want to retire in the pouch that has their scent in it. Uh, turn off the lights. Lower the noise. Lower the activity. You know, give them some space and they don't have a whole lot of activity. They'll try to chase them around. Lure them back to the things that they're familiar with. Uh, and leave the cage door open. You might even want to maneuver the cage into the room where you last saw them and leave the cage open so they can go back to home base. Uh, but at the foot of the cage, where you last saw them, you put out food, water, and their couch. Alright, well, looks like that's it. Uh, I'm sure you've helped a lot of our viewers out there. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Dean. Remember, if you have any questions, you can visit luckyglider.org. Please stay tuned for more informative interviews with Ed. And um, remember, if you're planning on a owning a sugar glider, please adopt. Don't buy.